to God. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. Praise God as we put our hands together and welcome none other than our pastor, Pastor Lily Etienne, to bring the word of God for tonight. Somebody shall praise the Lord as he comes. Praise the Lord. Shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say amen. What I want you to see in the book of Malachi tonight is that how God spoke to Israel, his chosen people, just after the book of Malachi, we understand that there were 400 years before there was another prophet that came on the scene until John the Baptist. And so we understand what Isaiah meant by the people that sat in darkness saw great light. They were, there was a dark period of time from Malachi to Matthew. And you're going to see some of the things that God said to the early church concerning their attitude and righteousness towards God. And I want you to look at this teaching tonight and realize, amen, that we ought not to fall into the same predicament that the early church fell into while remembering that the Bible says that these things were written for our learning, amen, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So I want you to really look on to the scriptures tonight and hear what the word of the Lord is. Malachi chapter 1, and we want to begin at verse number 1, and look at the love of God towards his church. Amen? The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said the Lord, yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And your eyes shall see, and you 
shall say, the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Now, we've gone through this before, but I think it's best that we revisit it, because I want you to understand your relationship between you and your father. How we should order our steps and our worship before God. We must recognize who God is in our lives. Now, as he approached the early church, and you have to give them a stern warning, you and I in this hour must not allow ourselves to fall into the predicament of the early church, Israel. Amen. Our trust must always and continuously be in the Lord. Amen. We must not look to man. We must always look to God for our guidance. Yes. We must always look to God for our deliverance. We must always look to God for our supply. Mm -hmm. And we must always look to God for all of our needs. Amen. Verse 6, everybody read, what does it say? Uh-huh. Now let's stop right there. Let's read that again. A son honoring his father and a servant his master. God is saying to you and I tonight, if I then be a father. Now how, how do we start our prayer in Matthew 6? Our father. Amen. That's, that's the relationship of the church and God. What do we call him? Our Father. Amen. He's saying back to you and I, if I then be a father. What is he asking us? Where is my honor? Is mine honor? Mm -hmm. Church, I want you, do your endeavor to honor God at all times. Amen. You call him your father, then we must show our respects to him by honoring God that is by walking according to his word. Yeah. If I then be a father, he says, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Amen? So we must always show our reverence and our respect for God. Show God that you respect him, you honor him, Amen. And reverence him. That's what he's speaking about by the fear of the Lord. Amen. If I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts unto you. What he calls you? O priests, that do what? Despise my name. And you say, wherein have ye despised thy name? Now, in the New Testament, find me First Peter chapter 2. Stick a finger there. We, we'll be right back at that. First Peter. Chapter 2. Where's your Bible, sir? <clears throat> when you have a say, man. And we look at verse number 9. 1 Peter 2, verse number 9. What does it say? But you are, what are you, church? A chosen generation. A what? In Malachi, he spoke to the priest. Nowadays, you are the royal uh -huh. priesthood. Amen. Number one, you are what? A chosen generation. Yeah. Number two, you are what? A royal priesthood. Number three, what are we? A holy nation. And number four, a peculiar people. Why are we in that category? That you should what? Show forth, Show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now look at the miracle of that. Being called out of darkness into
into the marvelous light of God, you become number one, a chosen generation. Yeah. You become a royal priesthood. Uh huh. You become a holy nation. And you become a peculiar people. Being called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And the purpose we are called for is that we should show forth the praises. Amen. Of him who had called us. Now, you got to understand, in the Old Testament, the priests then were called to offer up sacrifices. Amen. Amen? Amen. They did the work of the tabernacle and the sanctuary. Uh -huh. Their job was to offer up sacrifices to God. The Levites gave up praises and they helped with the, the, the killing of the sacrifices and presenting it before the priests. Nowadays, the sacrifice is eliminated. We have our sacrifice, who's in who? Christ Jesus our Lord. The only requirement of the church in this hour is that we offer unto God sacrifices of what? Praises. Praises. And so in Romans chapter 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's your sacrifice today. Not a lamb, a ram, or goat, or bullock. Your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. So in Malachi 2, he speaks to the priests. Amen? In 1 John, uh, 1 Peter 2, we find out that we are his priests, his royal priesthood, his chosen people, his peculiar people in this hour. Amen? Amen? And so let us go back to Malachi chapter 1. And we see that in verse number 6, that the priests despised the name of God. Now you being a royal priesthood in this hour, being owned by God, being purchased by God, must not come to the place where the early church despised God. Amen, Amen church? Amen. Now let's look at how they despised God in the old church. Verse number 7. What did they do? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, wherein have we polluted thee, in that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible, that is deserving of contempt or scorn or worthless. What they just worshiping God ain't, ain't making no sense. You know, a lot of folks don't have no joy in going to church. Amen. Now when you get to the place where there's no joy in coming into the house of God, then you need to do some tall praying. Yes. Amen? Because you ought not to lose the joy. No. Because if we were back in the Old Testament and a part of the early church, there was no such thing as not wanting to come to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Because if you had sinned, you had to go to the temple to offer a sacrifice. Yes. No sacrifice, no redemption. Amen. Amen, church? But in this hour, because the lamb has been paid, the price has been paid through the blood of the lamb, folks don't find time to go to God's house just to give him thanks. Amen. And to give him praise. Amen. And to give him glory. Amen. What does Psalm 100 say? No, go there and find it. I know you can quote it, but I want you to read it. Psalm 100. Amen? Psalm 100. What does it say? Yeah. How must we serve him? Sad. Don't want to go to church. Children mouth long. Yeah. Husband tired. Right. Wife ain't won't go. Right. Nobody won't go. Come on. How we must serve the Lord Church? Right. Gladness. Well, well. Come on. So whenever there's not a glad spirit within you in going into worship God, you need to check that spirit. Amen. Because the command of the word is serve the Lord with gladness. How many of you glad about singing? Amen. Glad about testifying. Amen. Glad about teaching the word of God. Amen. Huh? Glad about going into the house of God. And the other psalm says, I was glad when they what? Said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Verse 2 again says what? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Some say, well, I can't sing. That ain't your business. God says sing. He, he know exactly what kind of voice he gave you. That's right. Hello? Did you, did you go to the shop and buy that voice? No. Did you pick it up at the department store? So you think God don't know what kind of voice he gave you? But he said, come before me with what? Sing. He understood.
understand what kind of voice you got. Amen. He didn't say only the best singers come before me. Did he say that? Only those who can be very melodious in their voice. Did he say that? No. He said come before his presence with singing. Verse 3 says what? Know ye that the Lord he is God. Amen. Who's the Lord church? He is God. Uh-huh. It is he. I told you, you're not responsible for the voice you got. God made you. He knows exactly what kind of voice he put in you. Amen. So open him out anyhow and sing. That's the voice God gave you. But sing unto the Lord. Can the church say amen? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. Oh my God. Yeah, we feel responsible for what we look like. Yeah. Lord, why are you so black? Mm -hmm. Did you make yourself? Why yeah. I so red. Wow. I ain't got no skin color tone. Mm. My hair short. Mm. It nappy. I fat. I skinny. Ouch. Why? Who made you? God. And what did Jesus say? Thou canst not make one hair black nor white. Neither can you add one cubit to your stature. Uh -huh. Can the church say amen? amen. So read verse 3 again, everybody. No, uh huh. And who are we? We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Uh huh. Enter into his gates. Burden down. Complaining. Hello. I'm going to give God thanks for the day you had today. Yes, yes. Oh, church. You, you know where you are now, right? The house of God. Amen. Some of y'all might say, Pastor, you just don't know what kind of day I have. You better go ahead and give him thanks for it. Right. You go further down the road, you'll find somebody, uh, you know, half dead. Wishing they had the kind of day you have. Mm -hmm. Huh? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And enter his courts with praise and then be what? Be what, church? How many thank God for the day? Oh, yeah. How many glad about the day? Thank you, Lord. Be thankful. Huh? Be thankful unto him and do what, church? Bless his name. Bless I ain't that tonight. Yeah. My uh, Lord. How many gonna bless his name? Amen. And what Psalm 34 said, at all times. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Now look at verse 5. What does it say? For the Lord is good. For the Lord is what? Good. He is good, church. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure it. So the truth that they had back then is the same truth for right now. Yes. Amen? One truth for all generations. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back to uh, Malachi 1. Amen. So we're not, we're, not, we're not going to be in the business of offering polluted bread upon the altar. Okay. Amen. Present yourself as a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. Can the church say amen? amen. You don't want to come out of the gambling house and come straight into the, into the Lord's house. Come on. You don't want to come out of the hall house and then you come into the Lord's house to give him praise. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. You don't want to come from just cussing and swearing and then you're going to come and sing the praises of God. Amen. You got some folks like that, you know. Amen. I tell you what, find me James chapter 3. Hold on. Hold on to Malachi. We we go ramble a bit here. Right. Uh, James, third chapter. Mm. Well, well, well. Everybody have it. Amen. Say amen when you have it. Amen. Now I want you to drop down to. Verse number nine, talking about the tongue. Ooh, what does it say? Yeah, bless go, go from verse eight. But the tongue, the tongue can no man tame. No tame. What about it? it is an unruly Your tongue is an unruly evil. It is full of what? Deadly. Deadly poison. Uh huh. Watch this now. Therewith, what do we use the tongue to do? Come in the house and be blessed, God. Amen. 
Now, church, don't let this be your condition. No. Therewith, bless we God, and therewith, curse we men. So, soon as we will praise the Lord and bless God, the first person cross you, you're cussing. Yeah. Mm. Good church going. I hope y'all wasn't cussing today. Y'all get quiet on that statement. Come on now. Read verse 9 again. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. So you, you will praise God, but tell somebody off who cross your path. Read on. Verse 10 says what? Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. So you got some folks to switch on a dime. They can shout glory, hallelujah, and cussing the next minute from there. Hello? Out of the same mouth proceed what? Blessing and cursing. My brethren. You talking to the church now. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So he's not talking to the world. He's talking to folks that sit down in church and say they're saved. And this is their attitude. Yeah, well. Hmm. Read on. Verse 11. What does it say? Now the fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water. You ever gone to the pump and you had two kinds of water coming out of it? Fresh and salt at the same time. Verse 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a wine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Can the church say amen? Amen. Thank the Lord. What kind of praises are you giving him? Oh, God. What are you using your mouth for? Cussing under your breath? And shout hallelujah to the top of your voice. I know. Verse 13. Everybody read. What does it say? Let him show out of a good What kind of conversation? Good. Check your conversation. A good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. Check your conversation, church. Amen. Uh huh. Look at the next verse. But if you have bitter, bitter envy, are you envious of others? And I mean bitter envy. You threaten to that over the next man, guy. Yes. I mean, you worrying yourself sick. around their heart and they don't say nothing but brother is eating them right out on the outside yeah. on the inside How about? it's bitter down on the inside mm -hmm. and they got nothing but strife yeah. 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 going on on the inside bitter don't you know these things ain't gonna cross you no. what does he say glory not, not. and lie not against the truth mm. huh this wisdom descended not from above. That's not from that's not of God. No. Amen, church? Amen. That attitude is not of God. Mm. Don't be glo don't come to church shouting and, and, and your heart full of envy. My Lord. And you, but you sing it, brother, you carry it on. Yeah. Huh? You you can't you can't be glorying before God in that manner. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because you're lying against the truth. Yeah. yeah. Read verse 15 again, verse 14 again. But if you have what? Bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. Why? This wisdom descended not from above, but is what? Earthly. What about it? Sensual. What about it? Devilish. Check your spirit. Are you here tonight fretting and worrying over other people's things? Oh my God. My kid. No way. 
read on. Verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion. Not some, but every is right in the midst. Notice how, how deadly those two sins are. Envy and strife. It brings about confusion. Along with the confusion comes what? Every evil work. Church, say amen. So remove the envy. And get rid of the strife. You got some folks, like I say in the time past, they go to church just to argue. Yeah. They go to church just to fuss. My Lord. And they always got a criticism against somebody. Yes. Did you see him tonight in church? Yeah. Did you see her? Oui. Well, did you praise the Lord? Amen. Did you come to give him thanks? Lord, or you came to offer polluted bread? Yeah. Right. And you can't get into service when you when you look at certain people in church. You just can't get in the move. You don't oh, come, you don't come to church. something wrong with you? Mm -hmm. I want to kill my spirit. Really? What kind of spirit do you have then? Evil. Read verse sixteen again. What does it say? For where envying and strife is, there is what? Number one, confusion. Every evil work, nothing gonna go right. The choice say amen. amen. Now look at verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, it is first what? Pure. Then it's peaceable. It's gentle. Easy to be entreated. Not provocative and argumentative. People raise their voice from here to the tip of Mount Everest and you still are just as calm mm. as a lake with yeah. no breeze blowing. Amen. Why? Because you are easy to be entreated. And what else about you? You're full of mercy. Of mercy. And, good. and what else, church? Good, good fruits. Without, without partiality. And without, and without hypocrisy. And, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called. How many want to be God's children? Amen. Back to Malachi 1.7. You offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Going to church is worthless. No value. Amen? Come on. Verse 8. Read. If you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept that person, said the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This had been by your means. Will he regard your persons, said the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you that should, would shut the doors for naught. Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. How many want their sacrifices to be accepted of God? Your praises to be accepted of God. Amen? When you offer up your praise, you want God to see that and receive that as a sweet smelling savor. Not something that he disdains or looks upon as an abomination because the Bible says the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen? And so we read on. Verse 11. For from the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, in 
incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen saith the Lord of hosts the church would it be a shame if the heathen rise up and give God the praise and we who say we know him don't want to clap our hands we don't want to sing we don't want to testify. No. We don't want to study the word. We find no time for fasting and praying. And the heathen, once having received this gospel and seeing who this God is and the mercies of God, just break out in praise, Amen. adoration, mm. worship of Almighty God. You know what we'll do? Stand by and say, huh, we're wrong with him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But how about you? Oh God. Presenting your praise before God. Mm -hmm. Presenting your worship before God. Amen. Amen. Giving your God the glory. Mm -hmm. When you enter into the temple, you worship him with the whole heart. Amen. With the whole mind. And with the whole soul. Can you try to say amen? Amen. Go back to Psalm 92. chapter 92. Everybody have it say amen. amen. We read at verse 1. Read. What does it say? It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Did y'all get that church? What is it? It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name O Most High. Read on. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness, how many nights? I mean, we only ask for three nights of the week. We don't call you here every night. Some don't show up no night. But say we go to heaven. How we can want praise when we get there and no one do it here now? Come on now. Verse 2 again, everybody. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Verse 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. Anybody see the reggae there? No. I hear nothing solemn about reggae. No. No soca. I hear nothing solemn about soca. Or calypso, or pop, or rap. What kind of sound, church? What kind of sound, church? Did y'all get that? All this little fancy stuff they got going on in church now, that's not the word of God. It has to be solemn. Amen? Verse 4 says what? For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy See, you don't need man for nothing. God will help you to try him. Amen. He will bring you through every situation. Uh-huh. Read once more again. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad. Through thy works, I will try him in the works of thy hands. Verse 5 says what? O Lord, how great are thy works and thy thoughts. Brother, they deep. You ain't gonna never understand God, so stop trying. His thoughts are deep. Did you hear that, church? A brutish man know it not. This person who ain't got no sense. Neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. forever. Look like they're getting somewhere hey. Hmm. No, my brother. If they don't repent, hmm. destruction is on the way for them. Can the church say amen? amen? 
Verse 9 says what? For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. How many want a fresh oil anointing? Yes, yes. God will anoint you and God will lift you up and exalt you like the horn of a unicorn sticking way up there in the air. Amen. Can the church say amen again? Amen. Now look at verse 11, everybody. What does it say? Mm. My eyes also shall see my desire. Say what? My eyes Sit up, you ready? My eyes shall what? Also see my desire. Just take your time. All them who hate you all them who plot against you. Well, well. That's why you got to be praying for them. Yes. Because God will fix their business after a while. Amen. Pray seriously for them. Mine eyes also shall see my desire on my enemies. And mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Uh-huh. Can the choice say amen? Amen. amen. Look at the remainder of that. What did it say? The righteous shall flourish, shall flourish like, the tree. like the palm tree. Mm. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Read on. Those that be what? Planted. Planted. Where? In the house of the Lord. How many of y'all will be planted in the house of the Lord? Get planted in the house church. Yeah. What is the benefit of being planted? Mm. Those that be planted in the, in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. What else about them? Verse 14. Man, when you're old, you're still bringing forth fruit. Yeah. Mm. Well, well. Hello, y'all. No, don't rush that one. Read verse 14, what do you say again? And then they shall be fat. Hello. Hallelujah. But you got to be what? Planted? In the house of God. In the house. Watch it, y'all. Mm. In the house. Some to stop bringing forth fruit young. Amen. I got enough of that. Amen. Y'all still here? Why, why y'all get so quiet? Hallelujah. Why, why the churches always get quiet when we talk about God's blessing? Come on. Blessing plan. Mm, they ain't be thinking about nothing. They want Pastor Harry to move on to the next line. Well, well. They shall stand, bring forth fruit. In old age. In old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Some of y'all got a problem with being fat. Oh, yes, yes. God said you can be fat and flourishing. Flourishing, man. Walk and off it. Well. Verse 15 says what? To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Can the church say amen? In your old age. Stay in the house. Amen. Stay planted. Amen. You'll bring forth fruit. Amen. Amen. You'll still be able to witness on the streets. Yes, sir. Tell somebody about Christ. Tell them to get it right. Amen. Amen, church. Don't spoil yourself. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't spoil yourself. Because you can spoil yourself. And the Bible says, when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? Amen, church? You got to look to God thereafter. For him to fix the situation and turn it around. Amen. And how many know God is a fixer? Yes. He can turn it around. Amen. The key is to get what? Planted in. in. Oh, Once you're planted in the house of the Lord, he will nourish you. Amen. And bring you back to a place where there's blessings flowing in your life. 
to the point where you become fat and flourish. How many want that kind of blessing? Amen. We're going to offer unto God spiritual sacrifices. Amen, church? Amen. Put your hands together. God praise. Yes. Hallelujah. So read verse 12 and 13 one more time. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Oh. Now, one more thing before I let you go. Psalm 84. I want you to get in the house. Stay planted. Mm -hmm. And like I taught the other night, don't forsake the assembling of the house. Amen. Amen. Bring the children into the house. Amen. Wife and husband in the house. Amen. You ain't married, find yourself in the house. Amen. Amen. Psalm 84. Verse 1. What they have it. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow had found a house, and the swallow. A nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Where now the sparrow can find the house of God. The swallows find the house of God. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that do what? Let's read that again one more time. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. What's going to happen for them? They will still be praising thee. Selah. Can the church say amen? How many are going to dwell in the house? You will be still praising God. Amen? Verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. In whose heart are the ways of them? Uh -huh. Passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from what? Strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O oh Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give air, O oh God of Jacob, Silah. Behold, our God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For what? You're listening, church? For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them. Church say amen. amen. Anybody want anything good? Mm. What do you want good from the Lord? Walk uprightly. Just walk upright. Mm. It's gonna come your way. Yes, yes. Can church say amen. amen. Stay in God's house. Do not offer polluted bread upon the altar. Upon the altar. <clears throat> Put your hands together and let's stand before the Lord. So I thank God for his word. Thank God for all of you that are out. And I pray that you make it up in your hearts and in your minds with great determination that whenever the house of the Lord is open,
you want to be here to stand before him to offer praise and sacrifice unto him amen bow your heads at this time my father in jesus name i pray oh god that thy people would have a mind this night to stand in thy house in thy presence just to give you the praise the honor and the glory i pray oh god that polluted bread would never be offered upon the altars of thy people but oh god that we present ourselves always as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you which we know is only our reasonable service lord god let not one soul in this house be lost but let every heart seek after you in these last days in which we live i commend them to your grace and to your mercy and now lord bring us back again Friday, by your grace and mercy and by your will. For another time of fellowship and rejoicing in your word, we pray. In Jesus' name, all God's children say. Amen. God Almighty bless you. We see you on Friday night, by the grace of God. Until then, shake hands.